Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. I have an adorable quilt as you go bib project for you today. This is the June Taylor pre-printed batting and who wouldn't love to be able to give these adorable bibs for a baby shower gift, which I know whenever, whenever I've gone to baby shower gifts, those homemade things, whether it's a quilt, um, you know, or something crocheted, maybe a little sweater or, you know, homemade bibs, it's always so appreciated. So this is, this is a lot of fun, very doable. There's three different styles in the kit. Um, and this is the Go Fish collection from Northcott. We just thought this was so cute and went ahead and made three bibs. That's what's in your kit as you have the pre-printed batting for three different styles of bibs. Our kit will be with the Go Fish fabrics and I'll be going through the bib that is right here just because working with triangles can be a little bit confusing and I wanted to show you actually it's not difficult and it's a lot of fun. These go together quickly and let's just jump right into that. As you can see, the batting is folded up. When you unfold it, there'll be a little bit of wrinkles and creases. Don't worry about that. In the instructions included with the pre-printed batting, um, June Taylor specifically recommends that you actually don't iron this out because it can distort the batting. It's okay that these wrinkles are, are there. As you work with the batting and the fabric and you're back and forth to the sewing machine, it naturally just smooths out. So no worries with that. So step one would be to go ahead and cut apart the three different bibs and they have you cut about a quarter inch around the footprint. And as you can see, there's just kind of a solid um, rectangular line and the bib is kind of inside of that framework. As you can imagine, our bib is going to be cut to these specific shapes, but now we have a rectangle so that we're able to later cut that out to be the exact shape of our bib. The first step they recommend, once you put the batting fabric behind the pre-printed batting, is to go ahead and sew, and you can probably pick this up with the overhead camera, just sew directly on that line, and that's basically giving you a snapshot of the footprint that later on, after all the fabric is sewn to the batting, will cut the bib out on that line. So let's just turn that back over, and we'll have a look at that. If you've never done one of the June Taylor projects before, it's so easy and wonderful for a beginner. Um, and they are very clear with step, you know, piece one is where you're going to put your sec first piece, and piece two is where the number two and three and four and so on and so forth. So you'll make sure you want to follow the order in which pieces are placed uh, with the numbered batting. And of course, you'll be using the pattern as assisting you of what, what to cut each shape to as far as size. So let's put that aside for now. And one of the first pieces they have you cut are the actual triangles that make up the front of that particular bib. I'll be using a 60 degree triangle ruler today. And this is the clear view triangle ruler. And they're having us cut our triangles to two and three quarters. So I'm just gonna use a spinning mat to just assist me today. And I'll be cutting my first triangle uh, to the two and three quarters. And what I love about that is if I didn't have a spinning mat, I might potentially be doing this cut. Um, I've seen people who are ambidextrous be able to do it this way. I'm not, I'm very right-handed. And I think this can, is kind of a dangerous cut. So that's why I really love the spinning mat is I'm not making any kind of dangerous cuts. And I can get a very precise, uh, cut every single time. So I'm going to put that in place. So let's see here. Let's lay our two and three quarters on again. And oh, let me sh get that all adjusted. I think I bumped that. And that'll go here. And notice I like to lay my fabrics out and just make sure that I did go ahead and orient everything in the arrangement that it should be in. I like to do that with these projects. Make sure I have all the necessary pieces and that's ready to go. All right, so let's put a spinning mat and our triangle cutter uh, all aside and let's just jump right into the fun. 
So your centerpiece on this particular bib is your light blue, and that piece is never really sewn down initially. It's kind of placed there, and everything else will be sewn to it. And you see how our triangle fits perfectly in that footprint. So it's just gonna sit there. Piece number two is my green. And the first thing I always like to do is just set it in position and understand, yes, it makes sense that it goes there. So how would I make it be there? Well, I'm gonna certainly have to be able to place this right side together and then turn for that to fit. So let's place that right side together. And if you feel inclined to put a pin in there, then go ahead and do it. If you're comfortable not having a pin, that's fine too. Do whatever works best for you. So I'll be using the 50 weight confetti um, on this project. And if you're using a, you know, a light blue, you might wanna have a light blue fabric in your bobbin. But for the piecework on the top, I just have a 50 weight white confetti cotton. And we'll go to our machine and we're just gonna be sewing a standard quarter inch seam allowance. So my normal flow would be, of course, to iron, right? That's what we're, we sew it, we press it. But like I mentioned before, June Taylor recommends you wait until the very end to go ahead and press everything at once. So what we'll do is go ahead and just press to the side. And that's where I'll use my clover roll and press to go ahead and just create that seam. Now, one thing I should recommend, and I sometimes think about it afterward, is obviously I also have some bias going on. Sometimes when you can't press with an iron because of situations like this, putting some sizing in your fabric ahead of time is really helpful. It makes for those finger press seams or rolled seams with a tool like this stay. They're much firmer and less likely to shift on you. So we've now, we've now filled out that next portion. This is piece number three. So let's just look at that. You can see here's the footprint for that. That's where that's gonna go. So in order for that to be there, see that little, little point sticking out right there? I'm gonna place that here. And again, I'm gonna put my pin in. Let's go sew that again. So let's press out, and you see our little footprint right there? That's what I'm looking for. I want to roll that out. All right, and then our next fabric is our blue again. I just double check. Everything fits, looks like we cut our fabric right. We would be placing that right side together and see this point down here? Notice the tip of my triangle is gonna fit right in there. We'll sew a quarter inch, turn and press. And then here on the end, where it's kind of a half of a triangle, I went ahead and left mine whole. Like, I'm like, yep, that definitely goes in there. You'll go right sides together again. And I let that just flap out there. Remember how we went ahead and stitched around our bib? Don't worry, once we get everything stitched down to the, to the uh, batting, we will then flip this whole thing over and we'll cut around our sewn line and this excess will be trimmed away. So because I need to fill out the rest of my triangles here and the rest of my triangles there, I'll do that off camera. When I come back, I'll take it to the next steps, putting on the next portions of our bib. So I have all of my triangles sewn down and now we'll move on to the other pieces. So I have those, of course, cut ahead of time. And next will be piece 1011. 12 and 13. So you can just barely see that line there. And you know you have these little dog ears, don't worry about trimming those away. It's okay that those are there. So our piece will be stretching from this side to this side. So I just always like to double check, you know, if I put my piece down 
and it's at least that long, I've, I've, I'm good to go. So that's just another double check that you cut your strips to the right length. I can see that line and I'm just going to line up with that. Put a pin or two in there. I like to pin from this side so I don't have to remove those pins. And same here. So we'll sew a quarter inch and then we flip. The piece beneath that is our fish. Notice this is directional. So I always want to, to have you double check any directional fabrics and make sure that you understand that you'll be turning this upside down. And I always kind of like to just double check. So once this piece is sewn down and you've pressed this or roll and press that, the next piece will be your fish. And again, you'll be right sides together, sewing a quarter of an inch and down. Same with these two pieces. This goes here, and this piece will go here, and it'll cover that entire space. So since that's very standard, I'll go ahead and do that off camera, and when I, when I come back, we'll finish up our bib. This is what the bib looks like with all of the pieces sewn on. And now we can go ahead and take that to our pressing mat and press everything all at the same time. And of course, you don't want to, you know, be kind of like you're ironing clothes. It's really more of a true press. Well, we're just getting everything down good and flat. Okay, and you can see now why we had to stitch around the bib because I'd have no way to understand where that shape is. So we'll simply flip it over and on that drawn line, I'm actually going to go ahead and just cut just to the outside of that. If you cross that and cut the thread, it's no problem. So don't worry if that happens. That's not always the case in certain projects, but it is with this. And just make sure all your fabric is lying flat, because of course this is, this is kind of blind. You don't want that fabric, which is loose, to kind of peel back and you accidentally cut it. So do make sure everything is lying nice and smooth, and we'll just cut out. I'm using these Bordeaux scissors this is just an incredible pair of scissors. Anytime you're cutting through a lot of bulk, um, it's just an effortless, uh, it's just an effortless thing with the, these Bordeaux scissors by Clover because they're really made to just cut through anything with a lot of bulk. Okay, so let's look at our bib. How cute is this? Uh, absolutely adorable. Then, per our instructions, they'll have you cut um, a bias binding. So, of course, we need that stretch to be able to go around just the curves down here and certainly inside here as well. So you'll make the bias binding. Again, the instructions are outstanding, but I'll just show it to you because it's definitely different than how we would bind a quilt. I'm going to have you press this down a quarter of an inch, fold it down and press a quarter of an inch. And I would recommend that you start binding your bib on something other than a curve. So maybe just along the side here. And this is where you can go ahead. You might even want to use some Wonder Clips. I'm going to grab those out. I love my Wonder Clips whenever I'm doing any kind of binding. And we'll just hold that in place. Flat edges to the bottom, colored edges up on top, and we'll just kind of keep working our way around. Now you see where this is going to hit? That, that, this is, this is not planned right now. I did not plan for that joint to happen in the corner. I am not going, I'm going to move that. I've got enough going on in a corner. I don't need that to complicate that. So I'm going to go ahead and scoot that down so that that kind of happens somewhere else. I, anytime you have a splice, of course, you've got more fabric happening. Um, so let's avoid that. 
as we come down into our corner, all you need to remember is that this fabric will naturally stretch and where a joint is stretches less. That's one of the reasons I don't want that in my corner where I need stretch. So I'm just gonna keep easing that around. Keep easing that around. And now I'm on the straightaway again. And as you can see, you just kind of keep clipping all the way around. You'll come in with your standard quarter inch seam allowance. And the instructions are outstanding for that. Once that's all done, you kind of tuck this, fold it around to the back, and again, go ahead and wonder clip that. And then you'll just simply catch that edge and you'll finish up your bibs. So what an amazing gift this would be. If you have not tried the June Taylor Quilt As You Go projects, there's so many to choose from, from placemats to table runners, uh, towels, um, baby bibs, and more. I encourage you to jump into the fun. If you've enjoyed the video, I'd love to hear some feedback from you. And I look forward to bringing you another project very soon from Shabby Fabrics. <music>